I had over 15 miscarriages due to abuse. Whenever I get pregnant, that is when he wants to hit me. And uh, as soon as he does that, I'll just start bleeding. So most of the times is actually emotional um, trauma. trauma that causes the miscarriages. You could wonder why I had to stay for 15 miscarriages. Nobody deserves that much. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Terms and Conditions podcast by Pulse. Today we have a very interesting episode, so I'll ease into it with a few, a few statistics. According to a 2019 survey by the National Bureau of Statistics, at least 30% of women have experienced physical violence in their lives, and 68% of women, at least 68% of women, will experience sexual, financial, and emotional abuse. This is a very sensitive topic, and it's one that needs to be addressed. And today, we have with us a survivor, Miss or Mrs. Confidence, who is here to share her story with us. It's so nice to meet you. I wish we could be meeting under different circumstances, Hi. but it's Hello. yeah. It's nice to meet you. Could you please nice introduce yourself? My name is Confidence. I was working at Uswisu and um, the CEO, J. Steph Travel and Tours Limited. I'm the proprietress, Chloe's Brainiac Academy, oh. Abuja. And then I'm the CEO, Kami Care Home Inc. Canada. A woman of many skills and talents. <laughs> <laughs> Lots so, of yes. women doing and things. And I'm a survivor. Yes. I love that. I love that. Um, um, for people who don't know your story, could you share it with us? Could you walk us through? Well, um, anyway, I want to talk about how everything started. And then I think many women would learn from it. Okay. So though I've talked about my story, but then I saw that there are some people saying, well, I guess you saw the signs because most people that go through this, I would say 70% of them normally sees the sign, but they choose to ignore it. Well, I, for my own path, I never saw the sign. That's the truth. So when it started, I felt somehow it was going to change. But on the long run, I knew that after a while, I had to rethink. And then I had to see that <laughs> there's no change in this whole thing. And I had to plan a way to get out. Sorry, could you give us a timeline of the events? How long? First of all, are you still married to this person? Of course not. Okay. Not. Mm. How long had you guys been dating? When did you get married? How many months or years into the marriage did it first happen? Um, well, we dated for about two years. Okay. And then I've known him for a very long time. He was a childhood friend, even if we weren't that close growing up, but we knew each other. Uh -huh. So when we started dating, it was just through normal talks and then we started dating. And um, after one year, he proposed and we planned for a big day and that was it. So um, when we got married, just some few months later, I think two months later, uh, I had my first miscarriage and um, it, wasn't, it wasn't easy. He was a loving person, actually. He was nice. He was, he was okay. But um, when the whole thing started was my second pregnancy. That was when everything changed. Mm. He, he wasn't happy that I left home. I traveled because I was having this bleeding. So I had to call on my late sister that this thing is happening again. So she asked me to come over to see a doctor, which we have already talked about. This doctor normally comes into the country like twice in six months. So when the first one happened, we spoke with the doctor. So later, when this one started, he wasn't at home. I had to call him over the phone, but he wasn't picking up. 
So I had to, you know, just leave a note for him and I traveled. So when I returned back, he wasn't happy that I left the house without telling, telling him, him. Like I would have waited for him to come. Oh. So um, he wasn't, he, he, he didn't take that at all. So after some, I think after some hours, he just walked up to me and was like, why did you have to travel without telling me? Mm. And that was when he gave me my first <laughs> dirty slap. So I was like, what is this? What did I do to deserve all of this? You know, and um, since that day, everything changed. Everything changed. And um, after a while, I had over 15 miscarriages. 15 yes. miscarriages. Yes. yes. Sorry. And was it, sorry, in English is failing me. Was it due to abuse or just like hormonal well, trying to figure out? Due to abuse. But the very first one wasn't due to abuse. Wow. So um, whenever I get pregnant, that is when he wants to hit me. And uh, as soon as he does that, I'll just start bleeding. So, so most of the times is actually emotional um, trauma. trauma that causes the miscarriages. When you say hit you, I'm sorry, just yeah. to be very clear. Is it, you know, you said the first one was a slap. Yeah. Is it like yeah. full on? Yeah, he like just, you? yes, he just hits me. And then I fell down. I fell down because I wasn't expecting it. Yeah. And then he, he walked out, he came back and then he told me he was sorry that he didn't mean to, but why did I have to leave? But actually that was the moment I knew that this marriage was not going to work because I've always had that, um, I've read stories, I've, I've listened to people's stories, you know, and then I've, I told myself, even before we got married, I told myself, if he ever lays his hands on me or if any man lays his hands on me, you know, you always have that mindset while mm. growing up. Ah, nobody should beat me, or, you know. But on that day, I knew the marriage wouldn't work. But I asked him if he was willing to change. Mm. He told me, okay, don't worry. I won't hit you anymore. But when I came to think about it, when I asked him further, I came to realize that he was not just jealous, he was obsessed with me like he felt as i went out maybe i went to see someone else and that was when i knew that something is really wrong but you could wonder why i had to stay for 15 miscarriages why i had to stay was um uh, he was calling me a barren woman and then you know when you see your mates or people that you guys got married together the same period yeah they are all having their children and I love kids, you know, I was wondering, what if I, am I really the problem? Yeah. What if I leave? And at the end of the day, I won't be able to have another child or I won't be able to have a child. Yeah. Don't you think this will, you know, the, the name he's calling me already. Uh, am I really a barren woman? Mm. You know, those psychological Abuse. traumas and all that. I had to like, waited and asking god to just give me even if it's just one as soon as i have that one in fact i had to promise god that please if you give me this one child on that day i find that i have like this pregnancy has gotten to the point that i know nothing Can't like miscarry you know i will be very glad and then that was how oh. i I want to ask you a question. I made it, yeah. Because people say that before things escalate to physical violence when it comes to abusive situations, yeah. prior to that, you can have instances of emotional abuse, psychological yeah. abuse, mm. financial abuse. Was there, did it escalate from that or it was like something that there was a build up? Okay, you said, you said you saw him being possessive. You said you didn't see the signs yeah. in the relationship, in the courtship. Mm. Now, prior to that, thinking back on it, do you feel like maybe there were some instances where he had been emotionally abusive or financially abusive or controlling, or was it just out of the blue one day he hits you and it opened up a floodgates for other things? Well, it was just one day. 
Hmm. That particular event, honestly, was what changed the whole thing. It was just one day. He wasn't. He wasn't really emotionally abusive. He was. He was good. He was okay, and I didn't have any reason to believe that something of such nature was going to happen. Mm. So if maybe um, he had started such emotional abuse, I would have, okay, this is the point that he lost it. But nothing of such. We're good. We're very okay. Like, okay. And then when it comes to finance, it wasn't that he was uh, that financially stable. You know, I was actually helping to make him, you know, financially okay so it wasn't really about the finance mm-hmm. or no it wasn't and then when i when i knew that um like i said i told god to just give me one child and all these things happened um between just five years wow the spirit, the yes. spirit yes. of five, five years, years. Yes. including five the 15 years. miscarriages yes. for five years so when I finally got pregnant for my first son. Um, I was three months gone. And this whole possessive thing came up. Just, he wanted to hit me that day. I just told him, uh, please, like, can you just let me be a little bit? At least, let me just, just for once. And thank God, God just touched him. He just walked out just packed my load the little i can carry and i left i i left not to my parents place because all through this whole years nobody knew what i was going through i was doing the whole thing myself i didn't i'm not really a kind of um um sharing no not even just sharing like having friends keeping friends you mm. know i had just one friend but when she saw that I wasn't okay, she asked me. I just told her, don't worry. It's one of those things. Now, you that is married with how many children? She used to have problems sometimes, but it's okay. So that was just not that she knew what was going on. So how often how would how often did this act of physical violence happen? Uh-huh. I know you said that he used to hit uh-huh. you a lot when you were pregnant, but were there times where you weren't pregnant? Yes, where? yes, yes. A, a whole lot of times. A whole lot of times. There was um, one particular incident after he, after the whole thing. Um, I was just laying, lying down on the floor on the pool of blood. Because when it happened, I was just... Something just as if something just burst. The whole blood. Everywhere. Were you pregnant at that time? Yes, I was pregnant, and he left me on that particular point. So I have a question. When this abuse happened, did you ever go to the hospital? Of course. And what did they say? Did they? Um, I hid it, right? Because I, I feel like you know, um, doctors always say that they can see when. So there are signs of person yeah, being signs abused. Of abuse. Yeah. And even if you're saying that they ask you a hundred times, like I know obviously Nigeria is not the UK, but in the UK, even if you tell them you're fine, they will call a police officer and before you can leave the hospital, you will have to give a statement of they as as long as the doctor feels that physical abuse has happened, you won't be able to just leave. Like the do- it's the it's That's actually the like point. The- I I I hid it. I hid it in a way that um I would just tell them, uh, I fell down and this whole thing is happening again. You know, I was kind of their normal customer. Uh, are you here again? Uh, you know, it was just that. Because that's what ties me into one of the things I would say. I feel like it's not just society and the environment around people in general mm. also helps enable abusers because this is no shade on the doctor or anything, but you have a patient that comes in regularly same injuries same pattern of injuries i know that doctors are well versed in the human body they can tell that okay this is a bruise you can tell this was done to the bone and stuff like Mm. that you have a Mm. patient that comes in regularly and shows the same symptoms shows the same problems and it's not a cause for concern Mm -hmm. i do feel like in some little ways even the culture we have around don't tell don't speak up don't talk about it even down to alienating 
victims and making them feel like, oh, you should stay and build your marriage. You should stay and prove them wrong. You should stay because it's very that's easy it. to tell people to stand up and leave. That's but you're not it. making the environment friendly, mm-hmm. like comfortable enough for them to leave. Mm-hmm. If a woman gets a divorce, oh, she's a wicked woman. God hates divorce. God hates this. God hates that. You go to church, you're telling your pastor, oh, pastor, this is what has been happening to me. You say, hey, stay and build the home. Mm-hmm. Proverbs 31 woman, the really? can call wife of Bida and Labi, they start bringing up together. so many yeah. things. So I do feel like in certain ways society enables abuse to end up happening it's not just on the responsibility of victims you can't tell victims not to be victims they don't choose to be victims of course Mm -hmm. i won't wake up one day and say i want to get hit like she said it was a perfect almost perfect marriage two years of courtship nothing went wrong into the relationship nothing went wrong just boom one time who sees that coming what gave you the strength to i know you said that you were three months gone and then like but what actually because it it, he'd done it before like yeah. what was the okay i'm i'm gonna pack my bag and go anywhere just okay so um prior to that pregnancy um i was bleeding for almost um six months i was bleeding and then at a point my blood level was about 10 percent something yeah 10 percent so when they rushed me to the hospital then they now they were like ah she's gone because i i passed out so when the doctor saw me i think they did evacuation because i was actually unconscious so after i came back he was like don't worry the next time you get pregnant this will stay so you know i was holding on to that hope he he just told me don't worry um we've cleaned out all your system we've cleaned out everything don't Mm. worry the next one will definitely stay so after he told me that i was was like okay i want to see the next one and that was what helped me so when i took in i didn't tell him Mm -hmm. yeah i didn't tell him it was about two months before i told him that okay i'm pregnant again oh please don't hit me this time around let's see if this one is going to stay mm-hmm. at least I, I won't be a barren woman anymore if that has always been your problem don't worry this one will stay so when that particular thing happened uh, i just had to you know carry just carry my bag and i left so on that day i decided to you know pack my bags mm-hmm. and leave i've always like i said i've always known that I was going to leave this marriage but i wanted something to go with i don't Mm. want to leave empty-handed you know and yes when it comes to society like you said um i've always thought about what will people say Mm -hmm. you know um they've said um this person that i have traveled a lot Mm -hmm. you know uh in fact the word they normally use is are you sure because his people anyway said are you sure you can control this girl she's she's more versatile than you she has more educational background you know sorry were you more financially solid than he was 100 percent. well as of then as of then as of then i won't say yes no as of but you then, had potential yes i had potentials so you were about helping him out with finances of course, yes. I, of, course mm-hmm. of course so but uh, they were just bent on like okay this person she has gone to the so u.s his- yeah she's gone here she's gone here um are you sure you can but that was not actually the issue right mm-hmm. so um but i knew that definitely someday i was going to leave him and i've already already planned it mm. even if society is saying okay you're living you, you don't have a child i don't want i want to have a child mm-hmm. for you i want to have a child and my love for having children was just there why did you feel like that had to happen with him well well that's that's that is i wouldn't say it's a mistake anyway no 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 i'm just but, asking was anything um, going on in your mind that just made you think like oh yeah no, i want to have a child with no, this person no it because wasn't kids like kids are mm, a very long lasting bond and they will always tie you to yes, a person yes so. well as of then yeah. i said after having this one child i don't think i'll get married again mm. you know so i just like okay god should just use this to 
give me Versus, comfort, yeah. right? And then I would just move on with my life. And was, what was the reception of your family and your friends after? Like we said, when a society where women are not encouraged to yeah. leave regardless of the situation they say be a hebrew woman or whatever and stay <laughs> and build and work on it you can pray the way you can change him things like yeah. that so what was the reception like leaving well, the marriage um, and my, it's very upfront with people about why you left okay my um i'll say my immediate family they never knew what was going on yeah so when they learned it they were like been going through all of this and you never deem it fit to tell us what if something had happened to you and um when they were really scared was while i was pregnant when i left to my brother's house and um they took me to the hospital well i was sick obviously so they took me to the hospital i was just hoping that it wouldn't be the same miscarry right mm -hmm. And um, they found out that I had a heart condition. So I had to be placed on oxygen 24 hours for six months. Wow. So I stayed there for the rest of the pregnancy till I put And these medical birth. conditions were aggravated by constant physical of course, abuse? Of course, yeah. it was. I want to ask about your abuse. Um, I know you've spoken about it being physical yeah. and emotional and mental, but here I say this without sounding rude. Some people, f was there any, hmm. did you experience rape essentially as well in your marriage? No. No. No, he never did. I wouldn't say what he didn't do, mm -hmm. right? He never did. Um, It's just like, I've always, although he's not the kind of person that wants something and then, but I knew that he was cheating on me. Mm -hmm. he he was cheating on me so whenever he wants to get his um pleasure he knows where he gets it but the thing is the first time i found out he cheated on me was actually when i traveled you see why the whole thing you know mm. he said i traveled i left mm -hmm. and he came and told me that he did this so that was why i was like okay so were you thinking i went to see someone else I mean, are you trying to mm. you know projecting uh-huh so that was why i don't even he's not if it's that he never did mm -hmm. he never did i was okay on that aspect was there financial abuse no no mm. so most wasn't. of the time yeah. when a woman leaves or walks out of this kind of a situation where a woman has been abused and she mm. leaves oftentimes people around society will tell her why did you stay why were you still there? You saw the signs. Why did you keep on staying and things like mm. that? What do you think about those kinds of questions? Well, I do tell them they should never experience it. It's not easy to leave. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I have my own reasons for not leaving. I wanted a child so badly. Mm. I wanted to have a child. I wanted that, that, that child. So I said, I'm not going to leave. So they too might have something that is keeping them. And then sometimes, talking about what the um, um, uh, what people will say, that alone is another trauma on its own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I left and um, after I had my child and I started living alone, I got an apartment for myself, I started living alone. I, I went down to the point that I had to start frying Akara, you know, just to take care of my child. I saw people, oh, you just have a baby, where's the father? You know, uh, I think you were married. What happened? Why are you here? I, I heard a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And then some neighbors, are you sure she's not a problem, right? Mm -hmm. But I've already made up my mind. I'm leaving and that is it. And another thing I did was... I didn't have to listen to what people would say mm. because I know very well that I left to leave, mm -hmm. right? Leave to leave. That is what I normally tell people. Mm -hmm. So many people that are, you know, criticizing women that why won't you leave? Why are you still there? You know, get leg to come out. Mm. You know, like today I do have a lot of DMs. People, like women, they reach out to me. 
um, please, I mean, the first thing I used to tell them is, do you want to leave? Mm -hmm. You know, and most times I get the answer like mm. my children. Yeah. And the next thing I would just tell them is, you have to leave to leave mm -hmm. for those children. If you don't leave, those children won't have a mother. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be like me, yeah? Because all the things I went through, if I had left earlier on, I wouldn't have someone else's hats right now. Mm. Thank you to the person. Anyway, I'm alive, yeah? But I wouldn't have to go through mm -hmm. all of that. Wait, sorry. Are you saying that literally like you had a heart transplant? Yes, I did. So, um, why I'm saying this is I'm trying to tell women yeah. they don't have to be me. So, if you have the opportunity, if you're able to talk to someone, mm. please do. Can I, you know, you mentioned prior that you don't keep friends or you didn't at the time. Yeah. And you just had that one person. Mm. If somebody else's situation is different, I think even more from the friend perspective, mm. how... Let me use myself for example. How do I make myself, is it vulnerable? Is it available? Is it, I might not have the biggest house or like, or be the most financially stable, but how yeah. do I make myself available or vulnerable enough for my friend to come to me to come and, do you know what I mean? To feel talk safe, to, to mm -hmm. talk to, mm -hmm. and even, like I said, it's not even about, okay, leave the guy or whatever the case is, because mm -hmm. it, the truth is you also don't want to be in a situation where they don't, they're not ready to leave, but, I want to be there for my friend. Mm. Is it financially? Is it how do I make myself available? Because it's always easier to say, oh, what can somebody do? No, as a mm. friend, how do you even look at these signs and how do you have those uncomfortable conversations with that seeming like, yeah, I'm also a single babe. You know, married people used to do like, you don't know anything else. Like, how do mm. you have that conversation to make yourself available for to be to, to help be someone? To. Yeah, it's true. Um, there are people that's have friends a lot of them they keep a lot of friends while keeping a lot of friends there are some that might not be able to tell those friends some deep things mm -hmm. now um for women that are still in such abusive marriages or relationship or whatever the thing is allowing people like try to get that one particular person that you feel that okay i can actually talk to this person mm -hmm. let's say like right now i have a very good friend right and um i feel very comfortable talking to her you know i've learned from my past <laughs> i need to keep that one person right so i feel very comfortable speaking to her telling her everything you know and um and since i had such relationship I feel better. Like, I know that, uh, yes, this person, if there's anything, she can actually come to my aid, right? Yes. Uh -huh. So it's good to have that one person that you feel that, okay, I can, yes, I can speak to this person. You know, I have someone that reached out to me, was it yesterday? And after speaking to her, she told me too that she doesn't have friends. Mm. And I told her, well, um, I was like you, but the best thing I can tell you is you have to keep that one person. Mm. I might not really be the person, right? Because um, many women, I'm actually at the verge of helping like a thousand women come mm -hmm. 2025 to help them, you know, leave mm -hmm. any abusive relationship that they are because um, like I said, I've been there and then I don't want them to be me. Mm -hmm. Now, imagine someone, um, the, 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 in fact, the, the photo I saw yesterday was disheartening. What I saw uh, is not good. I had to tell this lady, if you don't want to leave, they'll come and drag you out. That is as far as I can go because it's not good to be there. Is, is not an option to remain in such place. So when people do find this support system, how do you handle a situation? Like to round up real quick, how do you handle a situation where 
you are this person's support system. You've helped the person out of the relationship. It's not always clear cut. People go back of course. and they go back. Mm. And after a while, it can get frustrating. And I'm speaking like, and not to center yourself in all of this as a person that, mm. like, I don't think people should center themselves when they're not yeah. the victim. Yeah. Well, I've experienced having a friend who was in a relationship with somebody who was very abusive. And time and time again, she'll end the relationship leave to the point where she was even telling me, oh, she wants to drag them on social media. She wants to drag him on. She wants to drag his family, things like that. Mm. And then we'll have conversations. She's done. We've seen a therapist. We've seen a psychologist, everything. <laughs> and then she goes back. I wouldn't lie, after a while, I got really frustrated, but I just had to tell myself, okay, Winda, you're here for this person. Would you rather not have these moments of frustrations as opposed to, God forbid, seeing your friend's caskets being put six feet under? So how would you tell people to stay strong for them? Because it can get frustrating, especially when you're the one on the outside, you're not inside, yeah. but it can get frustrating mm -hmm. when you see your friend or your family in a very bad situation and it seems like they can't leave or they keep going back. So how do you advise people to stand strong and then also what do you have to tell women who are in these situations okay how do you advise them okay. to leave now first of all one of the major thing that is to make this women stay is finance right that is one of the major thing now i for one i want to use myself as an example i left with nothing when i mean nothing absolutely nothing and um, I started from the scratch. I started from the scratch. And I wasn't just sitting down. Um, you know, many women, they're like, okay, uh, without this man, who am I? They don't have nothing. Like, they have literally nothing. They depend solely on the men, which I am actually engaged. I don't like women that want to, you know, just... Be fully there, dependent on the no. man, yeah. So when I started, when I came out, it's not, it's never going to be easy, except you are financially made already, because there are some women that are still financially okay that are still in abuse. In these situations, yeah. So like the one I'm saying right now is for women that have nothing, like they feel that okay, without this man, how will I cope? The thing is, start from somewhere. Make sure the first thing is to come out. When you are able to come out the the rest of it will just follow suit after you come out meet with people that can be able to support you even if you don't find something so good that you feel that okay i was actually having a luxury car before but right now i don't have nothing start from there i for one i started from there and today i am so proud of myself we're proud I'm of you as well. Too, yes, I am proud of myself because if I had not left, I think I would have still been there. And I don't think where I, I am today I, I at all. Here. I wouldn't be here. Like, mm. or me, I meant in general, alive. Like, like, yes, so of course, of course, of course. Like, mm. uh, financially, being financially stable as a woman, even if you you are going through any kind of stuff, if you come out, definitely there are things there are potentials out there for you and sometimes some of these marriages you hide who you are because you want to be under mm -hmm. an umbrella it's not yeah. it's not like no, you should be under, under the cover of marriage uh -huh, basically yeah, i get basically, that uh -huh. yeah. so but the thing is i for one i came out here i am today i own businesses both in nigeria and abroad i have my own um um beauty um product yeah i have my own you know clothing line i have a school i have uh, yeah I, in fact all those things just know that you as a woman don't feel that when you are still there uh, to cover uh, allow a man to cover you up and you want to stay there and you are being abused no you should come out wherever you want to start from start from there mm. Two, three years from now, you'll be surprised. Yeah. That's the way you'll be. Yeah. Thank you so, so much. Yeah. So much. Um, yeah. I feel like I really hope that people listen to your story and anybody being abused or even going through. Because like, like you said, abuse doesn't always have to be physical. It can be of emotional. Course. Um, I really hope that people watching this can reach out to you and even men as well, because 
I mean, we mostly spoke about women being abused, but there are some men in abusive relationships. A lot of them, yes. A lot, so of, them. A lot of them. nothing to be ashamed of, yes. you know? So mm. I really do hope that people will reach out. And like you said, you have to leave to, to live. live. Yes. And also, so. ch shame must change sides. I think that's something that we got from Giselle Pellicott, the lady in France that is currently oh um, yes. yeah 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 the, her husband yeah so cha um, shame must change sides yes and um obviously people need to know that it's not a thing to be ashamed of you can come out and speak for anybody please, out there who is experiencing any form out. of violence mm. i know that there are organizations that you can reach starting with people in lagos lsdva um on social media instagram twitter ask them phone numbers so also we're going to include some phone numbers on the screen and details and contacts of organization that you can reach if you're yes. experiencing this or you have somebody going through this and experiencing this. Mm -hmm. And once again, we'd like to thank you for coming thank on the podcast. So this was very insightful, educative, informative. Thank you for sharing your story with us. We are proud of you for leaving. On behalf of all the women mm -hmm. out there, we are proud of you for leaving and thank we can't you. wait to see what you Weird. do next. Yeah, 2020 thank you so much. Um, thank you. We'll see you guys on the next episode of all Terms right. and Conditions. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye.